Welcome back to my math teaching online today. Today is extremely summer, hot summer in British Columbia. Um, I love the sunshine, but the heat is really bothering me too, especially um, I'm standing here in my uh, small room, doesn't have an air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have to put up my on my hair up so that you know release the heat a little bit. Anyway, I will um, give you an interesting lesson today, regardless what the weather weather look like. So today I will talk about the first lesson in the Recalculus Math Twelve of the chapter trigonometry. We are going to learn a lot in the chapter as I design my course is full 100% curriculum. Let's say the curriculum of Canada or in USA is the same, right? Uh, they call it algebra in Canada, in uh, USA, and they call it pre-calculus 12 in BC, and they call it advanced function in Toronto. But I actually, very much similar, very much the same material and the same principle. Might be there's a little bit one or two chapters are different, but not much, to be honest with you. Um, the math as math 12, there are certain core of curriculum are very structured and very uh, principle. So I mean, doesn't matter you can't what the name of the course, it got to be cover on of those components in the curriculum. If noting um, out of the plan, the teacher should teach you like a, at least a chapter, um, but sometime in the public education, even though I am the teacher, I do the same thing, I have to cut it off. So I just deliver to my students five chapters and depend on the majority level of students. Sometimes we have a few trips, we have a lot of activities going on, depend on the school culture, we have to cut, um, reduce the amount of, um, of, of content uh, to match with the activity, school activity, and a lot of things involved, right? So I am standing here, uh, no restriction in the curriculum, and I would like to give you as much knowledge I know and I introduce to you. It's up to you, you can use it. If you have time, and depend on your speed of learning in your own time and your own space, you can learn the whole 10 chapter in 100% curriculum I provide to you in my courses. Or you can select one or two chapter, four or five or six chapter, it's up to you. And that's why the online education is very much opening to on individual students and it guide you to have a learning strategy, self-directed learning, and time management and organizational skill, three components to teach you how to be a successful college or university student. So online education provide you just enough knowledge or more than knowledge is up to you, right? You can handle how you can handle and how you can uh, learn it in your own speed, in your own time, in your own space, which is, I found like very useful. And because we are on different, so some students will learn the chapter faster than the other chapter, or maybe another student will um, be able to learn a lot and therefore I provide as much as possible knowledge and materials within the curriculum to give you as much as I can in my courses online. 
So don't forget to register to our online mathematics school in of Canada on July 3rd. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you register for this summer and you learn a lot out of our mathematics courses. Um, I guarantee with you. If you don't feel it matching with your level, at least you can um, see how the curriculum look like. So it's up to you. We we'll give you tools, the free online education with a very minimum amount of registration that even though less than you go to the store and buy a, a pizza to eat. So with all my labor, on my rate care, on my knowledge, I learned from years from university, from year of my teaching experience, I put in my course online development, create and design for all of you. Um, if we're not talking about the money, then to be honest with you, my course could cost you from a, a few hundreds to a thousand dollars. But the fact that you learn free, then take advantage of it, right? And knowledge is never harm, never throw away. If you have it, it's storage. It's your, you can take it out in the future, you can use it for now or maybe in the future. You never know, right? Um, so I hope that you will enjoy the lesson today. Um, enjoy my advertisement about my mathematics school registration online July 3rd. Go to mathcourses-online.teachable.com. You also can visit my mathteaching.ca to see what is the project I designed from my website and how the, do they look. Are they going to look the same like what you learn in your high school? And I believe that I give a lot more details, a lot of more information, a lot of structure, a lot of instructional teaching strategy in there. So I believe that my courses are very tailored to your need. I mean, like you make a dress and tailor it, right? Not like you buy it at home in the supermarket. So anyway, I think it's enough for my talking about the, my courses for now. Let me get to the first lesson today. I will talk about the um, First, I will talk about the conversion between the degrees and the radians. And what is the difference of two measurements, right, in trigonometry. Now, in the past, you all learned about the angles and 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, so on. But now we will progress to the radians. And the radians measurement is, um, very much useful in the trigonometry and usually we use a radians um, rather than the degrees but it of course it depends on the question so anyway the first question past today i will try to cover for you converting between degrees and radians the second task is i'm talking about the angle in standard position what is a reference angle? What is a coterminal angle? And um, what um, what is the smallest positive angles um, to calculate? So let's talk about the convert between degree and radians. Okay, so first on the axis, right? Look like a y axis and I can sit here. Um, I draw an arrow here, like a vector, right? If you start from this arms, right? This, this, this line of axis on the right, right? Um, you start from here, we call it zero degree. 
also equivalent to zero radian, of course, right? Zero degree in radians. Now, let's say if you start from zero and you make an angle go up like that with this arrow in this direction to the left, we call it counterlockwise, right? Counterlockwise, okay? Counter blocks y. So if the direction like this, like this arrow, right, this angle here, and I'm going to mark this angle at 28 degree. This is the degree, right? So first, let me talk about degree first. So this is 28 degree. And you know that if my arrow go like a square like this, see 90 degree angle, right? 90 degree angle. So at this um, axis is 90 degree angle, right? So from here to here is a 28 degree angle in the positive direction. This I call a positive direction, right? So we have a positive angle. If we go this way, opposite, and this we corner lockwise, then we're talking about the negative angle in negative direction, right? And that will produce negative angle, negative angle. So let's say from here to here, you know that's in 90 degree, but this way, right? So now let me draw another angle with different color. I use a red color, but I'm not sure you can see it from the screen or not, but to try to see a little bit different. So if you go this way, from here to here is 90 degree, right? And I think it's a little bit hard to see. So let me change this color. Say I use a blue color, right? From here to here is 90 degree. But let's say a little one in here, 20 degree. And let's say we go on the way, start from zero, right? Start from this um, axis and go on the way to the left up to this terminal M of the angle, right? This we call a terminal M. Terminal M. Terminal M of the angle. Right, so on the way from here to here is a negative direction. So 90 at 20 will give us minus 110 degree. So this arrow go on from here on the way to this terminal M in the negative direction is the angle of minus 110 degree. So that is about the angle in standard position. So we're talking about the angle in standard position. Angle in standard position. Standard position. So angle in standard position, this is positive direction, positive angle. And whether you draw like this, or you draw like this, you know it's the same angle we're talking about, right? Don't think this is bigger, right? Actually, it's the same angle, right? So this is positive angle in 20 degree. And this one here, negative angle minus 110 degree, right? So from now on, we start from zero. If we go counterlockwise, we know we have positive angle. If we go clockwise this direction, we produce a negative angle. And this angle from here to this terminal M is minus 110. This angle here is positive 28 degree. Now, I am going to talk about the gradients, right? So let's remember we start from a zero degree is this axis. Here is the 90 degree. 
90 degree at 90 degree, half of circle all the way from here to here is 180 degree. And if we continue to go in counterclockwise and go up to this, this axis down here, so 180 at 90 degree this way is 270 degree. And then if we keep going for the whole complete rotation, we get the full circle, which is 360 degree back this way, right? So the whole circle starts from zero, go on the way up to here is 360 degree. If it stop here is 28 degree, if it stop here is 90 degree, if it stop here is 180 degree, if it stop here, the arrow stop here 270 degree, if it back this way, the full circle 360 degree. Now let's talk about the radians. So zero degree equivalent to zero radian. 90 degree equivalent to pi over two radian because the whole half of circle from here to here is, let me draw this way, from here to here is, is pi. In radian, we call a pi. And the radian can be in decimal number or in the pi number, right? So half of circle is pi, which is equivalent to 180 degree, but also equivalent to 3.14. Everybody know the pi number is 3.14, right? So if we're talking about decimal, this is 0, 0, this is pi over 2, equivalent to 1.57 if you yield 3.14, you divide by half, right? Because that's the full, you divide by half. 90 of 180, the same like 1.57 of 3.14. 3 Down here in radian is 4.71. Back here, it double of this is 6.28, the same like 2 pi equivalent to two pi. So the full circle equivalent to two pi, equivalent to 6.28 in radian. And in radian, usually you don't write the unit. Or if you write, you can put a little R there, right? Indicate radians. But usually we don't, we just say 3.14. That is in radians. So remember the measurement down here, I'm talking about the radians. The measurement up here, I'm talking about degrees. So now these are the basic two pi, one full circle equivalent to 6.28. Half circle is one pi equivalent 3.14. This is pi over two equivalent to 1.57. And this is equivalent to three pi um, okay, so um, 1 pi over 4, exception here is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Um, okay, so the whole thing here is pi. You divide by half. This is pi over 2, actually. So 1 pi over 2. 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 2. The same like 4.71, 3 pi over 2, okay? And up back here, 2 pi. Now, let me talk about the next task. Our next task will convert between the radians measurement and the degree measurement, right? So, Let's do that. Now, let's talk about the unit conversion, the measurement between the degree and the radians, and how we're going to perform that. 
Thanks. So on the board, I put five pi over six. Now, when you see pi, it means radian. And it means our cash is convert to degree. If you see a degree like this, it means we convert backward to the radians. So anytime you see the radian, we convert to degree, radian to degree, radian to degree, radian to degree, degree to radian, degree to radian. Okay. And the way we convert, we use a ratio proportion. Um, there are two ways of setting up the ratio. Um, one way is you usually see something like this. And that is always the case, right? In here, um, the way uh, our teacher teach, teach us like this. But I also want to show you another way, which is I feel it more efficient because it avoids mistake and it's easier for students to do it, which is instead of setting up like in the in the function like this, um, we're going to set up in the horizontal. And the idea is if you set up like a number like this, uh, first of all, the student is always confused, don't know whether we put two over three or we put three over two. And when you twist the number like that, without any idea of which number should go on top and which number should go at the bottom, then you get into the error, the mistake. And that's why the ratio problem become, uh, sometimes become a tricky part for the student because they don't realize what number should go on top should I put two over three or should I put three over two? The way we set up in horizontally, first of all, we can put the unit in. So to avoid the confusion, we know what unit we talk about. We know we talk about the meter over the litres, or we know we talk about the number of cow over the number of chickens. So we, it allow us to put the unit in and it's clear to us that we don't make a mistake. So that is the, the way I introduced to you today. So for example, if you want to convert this to um, degree, right? You want to convert this to degree. So we use the base, we use the basic equivalent ratio first, right? And we all know that if we have a pi equivalent to 180 degrees. So now our question is, if we want to convert five pi over six, five pi over six, then we put in the pi column with the column, right? So the pi go with the pi, the degree go with the degree. Our question mark is right here, which is the S here. And you can see that the easier, easier for us to decide what number go in and set up like this, we never make mistake. So all what we do is if you set up like this to find X, to find the unknown number here, you do cross multiply divide. So three times four divided by two. That will be our answer if we set up this way. Right? Exactly the same way like we set up this way. Except when we set up this way, we don't confuse with the unit. We know what number go to which, which one, which one go to which one. And we apply exactly the same thing. Cross multiply divide. So here, cross multiply divide. Cross multiply divide. And our cross multiply, and sorry, for on the, uh, my markers, why today is. Okay, so cross multiply divide. I'm so sorry for not organizing well. Um, 
Okay, it's right here. Sorry. Okay, now we do cross multiply, right? And divide. Cross multiply, divide. So the answer for this is just the same way we do cross multiply, divide. 5 pi over 6 times with 180 divide by pi. And of course, the pi will gone, right? The top cancel with the bottom. We left with 5 over 6 times 180. Um, so let's do that. So 5 times 180 divided by 6. The answer is x here equal 150 degree. So basically, our answer is 5 pi over 6 equivalent to 150 degrees. So that's how we converse, okay? And I found this conversion like this, set up horizontally like that. First of all, it's very clear, you can put the unit in. Um, let's say if you want to have four chicken equivalent to uh, uh, um, four chicken equivalent to uh, um, $50, let's say like that. Then if it did 200 chicken, right? You can put C and C in here and how much it is. So it's so much easy to set up this way. Now, let me go through the next question, right? So our next question will be, convert four radian to degree. So let's do that. So we know that if we have 3.14, now we use a unit decimal, right? Equivalent to 180 degree, right? 3.14. So now if we have four radian equivalent, how much? So again, cross multiply divide, you have four times 180 divided by 3.14. And the answer for this will be four times 180 divided by 3.14 equal 229 poi, we can draw up, become like this degree. 229.30 degree. So now to convert this, let's say if you put reverse, you say uh, 180 degree equivalent to 3.14. Now if 0 0.8 radian, so you put in the same column 0 0.8. So you see set up this way, you never confuse. You know that which one is radian, which one is degree. And on what you do is put a question mark here, right? So 180 equivalent to 3.14. Now, if it's 0 0.8 equivalent to how much? So we do cross multiply, right? Cross, gotta be follow the arrow like this. Otherwise, if you go like this, straight, right? It's straight. So you never confuse, you know, cross multiply first. So it will be 0 0.8 times 180 divide by 3.14. So the answer is 0 0.8 times 180 divided by 3.14 equal 45.86 degree. So that's how you convert. So here we convert from 0 0.8 radian equivalent to this much degree. Now we use a pi, right? So the pi is, you say, now you use the basic pi, you say one pi equivalent to 180 degree. So now if we have 11 pi over six, how much it will be? Again, cross multiply divide. So I'm going to have to erase this here so I can,
So let's see. So we will do gross multiply this number times this number divided by this, right? So we will say 11 pi over 6 times with 180 divided by pi. Now the pi will cancel with the pi. So we will do 11 times 180, right? This number 11 times 180 divided by 6. So the answer is 330 degree. So you can put it right now, 330 degrees. So 11 pi was 6 equivalent to 330 degree. So here you go. You set up this way and you convert. No problem. It's very easy, right? Okay, now I'm going to go to the question E here. Question E here, we're going to convert 6,120 degrees, go to radian. Now, there are two ways you can convert to pi or you can convert to decimal, right, for radian. So let's do both of them. So the first question, I'm going to convert to um, pi, right? So I'm going to say um, 180 degree. Only way we have to establish the basic first, right? So the basic equivalent number is 180 degree equivalent to pi, right? All the way from here to here, right? This angle is one and a half circle and 180 degree, which is pi, which is 3.14, right? So half circle, this angle, 180 degree. Now, we're going to put six, one, two, zero here. You see, when you set up this way, you know right away which number go to where, right? Because degree go with degree. And we're going to put the question mark here. So again, we will do cross multiply divide, which is six, one, 20 times pi, divide by 180. And so the zero with the zero, so 612 divided by 18. So the answer is 34 pi. Okay, so now this equivalent to 34 pi. Now we will do F. So the F, I'm going to put it here. 285, so let's say I'm going to put 180 degree equivalent to, now I'm going to use decimal, 3.14, right? I'm going to use this number radian instead. So we have 285 degree convert to that. So again, cross multiply, right? This time that, divide by that. 285 times 3.14, divide by 180. So two. A5 times 3.14 divided by 180 equals 4.90 round up 97 radian. So this answer equals 4.97 radian. And usually radian, we don't put any unit. And that's a little bit confused, right? Because the ratio of the trigonometry is sometimes, like the sine or cosine, have a decimal as well. And we don't put it, it means we confuse between them. But I don't know. That's the way people do. However, if you want, you can put a little R here to show this is the measurement uh, of the angle 4.97 radian. So that is the measurement of the angle, not the trick. Uh, ratio, right? Not the trick like psi or cosine, something like that. So, so that's how we convert. So I'm done with the first task. Now I'm going to show you the next question. So at the determine the length of the arc that subtends each angle at the center of a circle with the radius seven centimeter. How are we gonna do this question? Um, they give us 
question A, 3.9 radians, and question B, the angle is 280 degrees. So first, let's draw a little diagram, right? So let's say if you have a unit circle, circle like that. Now my drawing is not really pretty. Um, sorry. So let me do, try it again. Okay. So let let draw like this first. I'm gonna mark the radius here, here, and here. Okay, so we have a circle look like this. And we have the angle. Um, we have the angle. 3.9. And here our angle is 3.14, right? And let's put on top here, 3.14. The same like pi, but let's put according to this number, right? 3.14. Now the angle 3.9 will be over this a little bit. This is 4.7, right? So maybe it's just about somewhere about here. And the radius here is seven centimeter. And the question asks determine the length of the earth. So it means from here, our length all the way from here to here. What is the length of this earth? And let's call this is the S, okay? It's stand for the length of this earth, S. So we want to find the length all the way from here to here. Given the angle, all the way from here to here is 3.9 radians. So the S, S here, the little S here, the length of this S here, subtend the angle 3.9, which is from all the way from zero to this terminal M, right? So this angle. We want to find out this piece of S here, which is more than half of the circle, right? So again, we're going to put in the ratio and let the develop the formula first. So let's say the full circle is 2 pi r, right? The full circle um, equivalent to the full circle to pi r, uh, which is the circumference, right? Equivalent to two pi. And two pi is the radian of the full circle, right? The radian measurement of the full circle. So two pi r is the circumference formula, right? Of the full circle equivalent to pi. So now if our, uh, um, um, S, which is the length from here to here, S. Then um, our S equivalent to an angle theta, right? This is the whole angle of the circle, which is two pi or we use two pi or we can use 360 degrees, the same thing, right? But we're gonna use two pi here. Then the S here will be equivalent to this angle theta here. So I'm gonna put theta here. We are going to develop the general formula, right? So again, we're gonna do cross multiply divide S times two pi divided by two pi R will be equal angle theta, right? So this one, let's say this is the question mark here. Or uh, we can say this is the question mark. Let's say like that, then let's change it. 
let's change it. Let, let's say the question mark is S, right? So then we use cross multiply divide, we'll say theta times with two pi r divided by two pi. Now the two pi will cancel out with the two pi down here. So the S here will be equal to this. S will be equal to theta times with r. So that is the formula. Now the question here gives us the angle in theta and also give us the r and ask for s. So we just follow this formula. We say s will be equal. Our angle in theta is in radian is 3.9 time with the r is the radius and the radius is 7. So that's our answer. So let's calculate it, right? So 3.9 times with 7. And make sure you use the radian to answer this card question, right? We don't use 360 degree or 180 degree. We usually use the radian, uh, the radians, yeah, measurement, so that we get the right answer. So the answer is 27.3 centimeter is the length of this axe. So this axe length of S, right, of S equal 27.3 centimeter. So that's how we use the ratio answer question A. Now let's do question B. For question B, first of all, we have to convert 280 to the radian first. Because to answer this question, to yield this formula, you always have to convert to the radian. So let's say 180 equivalent to 3.14. So now 280 degree equivalent to how much? So cross multiply divide, which is 280 times 3.14 divided by 180 will be equal 280 times 3.14 divided by 180 equal 4.88. So we convert it and it equal 4.88 radian. So now I'm going to use this formula, right? S equal theta times R. So our R sub 10 will be equal to 4.88 radians time with radius, the same radius 7. So the answer will be time with 7 equal to 34.1 centimeter unit, right? The, the arc length subtend so this angle equal 34.19 centimeter. So that is the lesson today I show you uh, about converting between the degree and, and radians using the ratio also answer the question like this. I hope you enjoyed this video today and I will give you another video, and that's my dry ball here. We will talk about the coterminal angle, reference angle, and how to find the reference angle, the coterminal angle in the next lesson in the unit of trigonometry of the course pre-calculus man 12. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy and see you. Stay tuned for our next video.